G'day, today I'm going to show you how to change the cam belt on a RB26 R32 GDR, but it's the same principle for the RB20, RB25, and all the twin cam other RBs, um, obviously the 26 as well. Um, so, first thing you want to do is drain the coolant and mark the cam angle sensor. Um, even better if you have a timing light and check it after, but it's just good practice to put it in the right spot and then you can at least run it up, warm it up and it's timed up relatively where it was before. Um, yeah, so drain the coolant and then start pulling these covers off um, and the belts. So I'll show you where to, disc um, once I get these, the rad out, I'll show you where to loosen these off because um, some of the bolts are quite tricky to get to. The easiest way to get the radiator out is under these two 10 mils. A 10 mil headed nuts. So the upper mounts are gone. Um, and you, I personally take the fan out with the radiator in one go while the belt's still tight. So you can just crack these off with the 10 mil spanner for the fan. Um, get rid of this connector. Just leave the shroud on. And you can drain the coolant from this drain on the left hand side, although this one's blocked so it's coming out of the side. Um, and then there's another clamp down here. So once all that is off um, and the fan's loose, you can sit it in the shroud. And then gently. Wiggle the whole thing out. Now that you're here, um, you want to crank off the alternator bolt, uh, the main one holding it on, and this top one here, and then the adjuster is on the back of it, right there. Hard to see, there's an adjuster there. And winds that thread out. Um, then there's another bolt behind this power steering pulley. Turn the engine over clockwise with a 30 mm socket. And you'll be able to loosen off that one there. And then there's another bolt there to loosen. And the adjuster is on the end of it. And then from the third belt, the aircon pump belt, uh, there's a nut you want to loosen there, and the adjuster is underneath. That is the most stuck crank bolt I've ever had. Used impact power bars, I tried rattle guns, I tried everything. I ended up blocking the crank off, or well, the flywheel off through the um, clutch boot hole. And then put a pole a meter and a half long off it and it managed to lo loosen it. I guess that's what you get for a 29 year old bolt that's never been off. Now if you haven't got the cast out um, and the cover covers off, now's the time to take it all off. There's um, some Allen heads there and then some 8mm heads down there and 8mm across on this water line. I normally just tuck this out of the way if I don't want to unhook it completely. Yeah. Right now that the covers are off, um, you want to line these timing marks up. So this dot here lines up with the line, as you can see there, and then the same on this side. And at the bottom, you just make sure the keyway's straight up and down, and there's a dot and a notch in the oil pump housing that lines up. And from there you can obviously pull the belt off. So that's TDC. If you're doing the cam seals, this is where I normally loosen these off um, with the belt still on in case it turns so you don't end up having valves touch pistons or anything like that. Um, a little impact rattler is the best thing because it'll hammer them off. Um, and you can pull the belt off by either just taking this 17mm bolt out or just loosening this tensioner off and then sliding the belt off. Once you get this rear cam cover off, which is just a couple of 10mm and a 12mm, 
Um, you can get to the seals, and as you can see, that one's been leaking quite bad. This one's not too bad. Um, this can be a mission to get off. I normally soak it in CRC. Uh, so I'm penetrating fluid for a couple of days, or a day or so. Um, and then very gently pry off there, because it's oil pump, so if you dent or damage the housing too much, you can cause all sorts of damage. Um, yeah, if it doesn't want to come off, you can drill it, and then use a puller, and I'll drill it, tap it, and then use a puller to pull it off. With soaking that gear in CRC by spraying up in that groove, um, it pretty much just slid straight off, um, pretty much no prying at all. Next, um, pull off the water pump, which is pretty self-explanatory. Two 14mm bolts, a 10 and some 12s. Um, yeah, 14mm heads and 12s, and a 10mm head. Even though I'd been draining for, I don't know, I've been sitting here for two nights draining, um, there's always coolant in here. It's always absolutely full of it, so put a tray underneath. After you've got the water pump off, make sure you clean the surface up real clean with a razor blade. Um, and I use a little bit of emery paper and very lightly get all that extra gasket material off. Um, and then, yeah, it's time for reassembly. Make sure you put that plate behind that lower pulley. Otherwise the cam belt will get chewed to bits. Um, I'll see you when I get all the gears back on, the water pump. I'm ready to time the engine back up and make sure it's ready. I'm going to swap the spring over from the old tensioner to the new one. And remember the washers that go on the outside. Um, but this, this little end of the spring here needs to sit on the top of that bolt. So, like... this because that causes the wider part of the lobe to push on the belt now i found the best way to do this is make sure everything's at tdc again obviously it shouldn't have moved if it has you might be in trouble but then turn this so the lobe is all the way to the left so it's putting the least strain on the belt and then put the belt on as tight as you can on this side on the left hand side keep strain on it put it over to the right keep strain there have your idler ready you should be able to very gently wind it in but you got to be careful not to cross through anything look how easy that is you can then once you got that in, loosen off the 14 on here, put a bit of tension on it, which it automatically has already, and put it a little bit more tight. This is the point I like to double check everything, so make sure that these cam bolts are 100% done up. Um, obviously if you, the cam comes loose, cam gear you're in the pose. Um, double check your tensioner and your idler nut and bolt make sure that this shim is on here because if that shim's not on there your belt will get chewed to bits um, make sure your dowel's in there definitely don't want the one missing out of that bottom pulley if you're missing it now you're already too late you'll pull the belt back off because um, this is the point if you miss something here it's a pain in the ass to get back to it at this point I do the crank pulley bolt up Tighten up the power steering belt, the aircon belt, um, and leave this one loose so I can drop the radiator and the fan back in in one go. And I've refitted the CAS in the right spot where it was before, but I will check the timing with the timing light when I get it running. Slap the radiator in just like before. Put a couple of nuts on the fan studs. Now you can put all the hoses on and I'll show you how to bleed it up. I've just given it a coolant flush and just going to bleed up the coolant. So you want to run it with the heater on.
keep the reservoir topped up and there's a bleed nipple here 